For the past month, I've been taking a look at the Pikmin series in order to prepare for the release of the highly anticipated Pikmin 4. And during that time, I grew to become a fan of the series, which made me all the more excited to try out this game that honestly seems like it will never come out. This game has been highly anticipated for basically an entire decade, and a console generation and 10 years after the last mainline Pikmin title, I just have to ask, does Pikmin 4 meet the hype? And to that I have to say no. It surpasses it. Okay. Where can I even begin? Throughout my entire time playing the game, the only way that I could describe it was the weird sensation of that of change that is still accompanied by the familiarity that I've come to understand and expect of the Pikmin franchise. So what I mean by this is that while some things feel like they've changed, uh, a lot of the things still feel the same. It, it, it's weird, it's very weird, but I'll try to make my thoughts sound slightly coherent one way or another. The game throws a curveball for this one, as you are just going on a whole crusade to rescue Olimar, the team that was supposed to rescue Olimar, and random tourists that ended up in this damn planet. From the get-go, it is very clear that Pikmin 4 is a bigger game than the entire series preceding it. Not only will there be more people to rescue, but there will also be a bigger amount of collectibles to find, a bigger amount of content to interact with and a bunch of side quests are introduced to the Pikmin series which I didn't interact with because I don't like doing side content but the side content is still there regardless there is a bigger amount of freedom in the way in which you tackle stages there are so many things to collect that it is very easy to end up missing some content entirely in my playthrough I didn't even see a single purple or white Pikmin it's that easy to miss them but I don't think that's necessarily bad Pikmin is a game about exploration but this game puts a bigger emphasis on exploring and discovering things than ever before it truly sells the idea of exploring uncharted territory and having content that's easy to miss, at least personally, makes the experience feel more personal, like every journey is unique to the explorer embarking on it. So can I call this the bro? No! But you can download Raid Shadow Legends! Pigment 4 doesn't count like an open world, but it also won't try to hold your hand constantly. It drops you in a very big playground, and I mean, in this case it's almost in the literal sense of the whole house thing the game has going on, but anyways, it will drop you in a big level and it'll leave you to your own devices. In many ways, everything that I've said is essentially also something that was done in the prior games, only now in a bigger scale, but something about the way in which it was executed made it feel way different. The game the game feels more like a grand adventure in an unexplored planet. The small things from the way in which the world feels bigger than before to the way in which the camera is positioned help in separating this game from the others in the series. Speaking of the camera, I do have to say that this is oddly enough one of my favorite changes in Pikmin 4. There wasn't really an issue or even anything wrong with the camera of 1 through 3, but the camera in here makes you feel more in the shoes of the characters, and as I said, it helps sell this game as a big quest to embark on. Speaking of which, the game is absolutely beautiful. I don't know what Nintendo has been doing honestly, but they have been killing it with the Switch games that have been coming out during this year. Metroid Prime, Tears of the Kingdom and Pikmin 4 have been some of the best looking games of this generation, and there's not that much competition. I love it when the aesthetic of a game is exploring everything through the point of view of an ant. When done well, it kind of recontextualizes the world and the items that we use in our daily lives. And I think that this is a pretty good concept that is ex executed very well in Pikmin 4. Everything from the captains to the enemies and the treasure looks good as hell and makes me wonder if I really am playing on the toaster. It's almost like the Pikmin are out in my backyard. The gameplay has also changed in many ways. Now we're back to two partners instead of three from the last game. Honestly, I was expecting them to keep increasing the number of partners per adventure. Pikmin 16 would have been an absolute nightmare. Ochi is going to be your companion for the adventure. He has most of the abilities that your character has, except he can charge at enemies, swim, carry Pikmin on his back, but he can't tell Pikmin to charge at objects and creatures. On the other hand, the main character can't jump, charge, or swim, but they can explore underwater sections, command Pikmin to charge, and use items. And together with Ochi, the characters make one cohesive, complete moveset that is fun to use and explore with. Exploring in this game was a delight from beginning to end. One of my favorite additions is that you can change the location of the base with certain areas which makes traversing the land more efficient than ever before. One of the aspects I ended up liking the most was the number of pigment that you could carry. At the beginning of the game you start out with 30 or so instead of the usual 100 that you immediately get in the other games. And at first while I thought that it was a weird decision, it quickly made the game feel more satisfying and fun to play. It made me appreciate the high number of pigment all the more and it makes collecting treasures that you couldn't get before because you didn't have a high number of pigmen feel incredibly good. 
All the Pikmin are back from Pikmin 2 and 3. I don't think the Boltman is back, but I do think that they managed to make a lot of good use out of the Pikmin that are here. Every area has a list of Pikmin that are recommended for use, which keeps the game fresh and gives the opportunity for every Pikmin to shine. You can find onions for every Pikmin type and you'll eventually find other onions that increase the number of Pikmin you can take to explore with you. Which, I don't know, I just find that pretty neat. The biggest change in Pikmin 4, however, is easily the new and improved cave system. In Pikmin 2, the caves weren't really bad, but they did get repetitive by the end of the game, and as a result, could get more annoying because of how the hell did they think that was a good idea to make 10 layers? You know, caves sometimes make me want to explode a little. The caves are way shorter in 4, and I found them more dynamic because of the wider array of Pikmin in the game, which, looking back, was another problem with 2. The caves are where you find most of the castaways that you have to rescue, as well as a bunch of treasure that you'll need to collect to finish the game. And there are a lot of caves throughout the game, so the choice of which ones to tackle is yours to make. The game has a huge amount of content in general. You have the side missions, all the treasures, the caves, the dandry battle, holy shit, I forgot to talk about dandry battle. I never really mentioned the multiplayer in the other Pikmin games because I never really got to experience them. In case you couldn't tell, I kind of just played these games on my own. I heard that the bingo battle on Pikmin 3 was pretty good, yet I was never able to get the actual experience. Throughout the game, you'll be challenged to partake in Dandry Battle, in which you do the standard Pikmin stuff while trying to get the biggest amount of points. There's rotating multipliers based on the enemies you kill and the items you collect, there's options to screw over the enemies, there's items to screw up the enemies, you can throw the Pikmin, send your dog to screw over the enemies, yeah, there's a lot of fucking with your opponents in this mode. I haven't even touched upon the post-game content in the game, which, full disclosure, I haven't gotten the true any of the game simply because I felt satisfied with my experience with the base game as it is, but the things that I have seen about the post game looked absolutely crazy. Pikmin 4 is a great game in the Pikmin series, and I believe it to be definitely worth the hype that it received for years on end. I beat the game in around 9 hours, but going for all the content can raise that number to about 20 plus hours. This game is great. I don't know if I will say that it's better than Pikmin 3 just yet, but I definitely will say that it is definitely of the same level of quality. This game is fantastic. Well, as it turns out, I completely forgot to record the outro, so I'm recording it right now as I'm editing this video. I'm just a random stranger that me. <laughs> That's what happens when you try to rush it. Um, I'm just a random stranger that you met on the internet. But hey, just call me Sudo.